Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And a few months ago, you saw me attempt to change the IMS bearing in Archie, my 996, 911. And today I am actually going to succeed. All right, so for those of you who weren't following my uh, uh, original attempts at changing the IMS bearing on uh, Archie, the 996, basically, um, the rough rundown is the IMS stands for intermediate shaft and it's the bearing on the end of that shaft. So uh, there's still an intermediate shaft on uh, the air-cooled cars, but uh, that was actually in the, uh, the, the bottom of the engine and it was oiled in with the engine. Whereas on the 996s, in, for some reason in Porsche's wisdom, decided to change that bearing for a sealed bearing that should last the life of the car. So Airline Engineering actually came up with a retrofit bearing that uh, goes in place of that. And this is actually a ceramic bearing that's um, uh, much harder wearing, much heavier duty than the, uh, the bearings that are in the car. And this thing should uh, just lay my mind at ease driving this car. It actually also, um, at least in the Australian market, improves the value of these cars quite a bit because a lot of people are paranoid about the fact that the engine could blow up at any time. If that bearing goes, basically, um, parts of the bearing go through the engine, but if the bearing goes completely, then the uh, the timing chains come off. Basically, valves will hit pistons, and it's all over. So, um, yeah, you don't want the bearing to go, and uh, that is um, something that affects these. Um, it's worth doing, uh, even if you're not worried about the bearing, just, just by the fact that it improves the value of the car. So. Uh, uh, I am going to fix it today, but that means going back through the entire process again of removing the gearbox, removing the clutch, and uh, getting to the bearing. So, first things first, let's disconnect the battery, get it up in the air, and start getting all those covers and stuff off, and see if we can get that gearbox out again. All right, so I removed all of the uh, the plastic covers underneath and the uh, aluminium cross brace that's under here. Um, before I go any further, I'm going to dump the oil out of the, uh, the engine. It's time to do an oil change anyway, so uh, dump the oil from the sump here and change the uh, oil filter. All right, I put the sun plug back in and a new oil filter in. I'm gonna leave myself a note to tell myself that there's no oil in the car to make sure I change the oil and, and top up the oil before I start it again. Next job is to pop off the uh, shifter cables and disconnect reverse light switch. And then I can get over the other side, start taking the CVs off and the slave cylinder. Thankfully I actually have my previous video to go back to and watch and uh, that actually gave me the tip that uh, getting the slave cylinder off, it's quite difficult to get up in here to get the clutch slave cylinder off, but uh, this socket length is just perfect. It's not too short, not too long, it's just the right length I need to be able to get in there. It's uh, quite frustrating because it's really tight, but I managed to get the, uh, the slave off, the CV joints are off, the, uh, the gear shift cables are all off, and same with the reverse plug. So now it is time to go through and start taking off all of the bell housing bolts all the way around the, uh, the gearbox. Uh, all right, so I've taken all the bell housing bolts out, and now the gearbox is completely disconnected from the, uh, from the car, except for the uh, front gearbox mount. That's the only thing holding it in, so I need to support it. Just to note, this is uh, how I place my bolts. As you can see, they're all different lengths and stuff, so just a piece of cardboard. I wrote top on it, and this is roughly the pattern that they came out, so this is the pattern they're gonna go back in. Keeps it nice and easy.
Well, getting the gearbox out was definitely easier the second time around. Um, so next thing to do is to take off the clutch, take off the flywheel, and um, we can reveal our little IMS bearing that we need to tackle. I can sort of see the uh, housing for it down below, so let's start pulling apart. Okay, so quick tip to getting the flywheel bolts out of the flywheel is to, um, you can buy a tool that will lock the, uh, the flywheel uh, on the engine solid, but uh, I find I just put one of the gearbox bolts back in with a piece of strapping and uh, one of the pressure plate bolts and that holds it together. That I covered as well in my previous uh, video, so if you want a more detailed video of the uh, gearbox removal, that's my, go back and watch my previous one. Uh, this one is, uh, yeah, I'm just racing through this bit just to get to the IMS bearing itself, the bit that I had so much trouble with last time. Okay, so many of you saw that I had uh, fun trying to replace my IMS bearing last time I played around with it. This time I'm going to uh, do it properly and the guys at LN Engineering actually reached out to me and sent me out the toolkit to do it properly. Uh, going through this kit, this kit is, uh, is a really nicely uh, made kit with all the pieces all laid out nicely there and the first piece I'm going to need is this little locking pin and this is designed to lock my crank at top dead centre so um, I'm going to go through now and uh, look for that little teardrop uh, hole again Watch my previous video, I'll show you it all in detail, but uh, we'll turn the crank around until we get to the top dead center, put the pin in and uh, lock it in place. Basically, the rough idea is you need to get it about uh, 11 o'clock is where you want to get that teardrop hole and then this pin will slot in and now it, this engine is now locked at top dead center. Okay, so now the crank is locked at top dead center, I need to lock the cams in as well. And I spent ages last time trying to pull the cover off because I was picking away at it and I couldn't get hold of it, I couldn't get any way to get underneath. If you actually look at the new covers, there, um, there's like an inset washer in it and there's a hole in the middle that's just plastic. So if you poke a pick through the center, you can actually poke it through, you're not gonna do any damage to the cam with a small pick. Just put it in there and then you can lever it out and pull it out. So just a quick little tip there. So if you're facing the flywheel, this is the back right hand bank of the engine, the back of the right hand bank near the exhaust. And you can see here there's this, uh, the cover is just here that I need to get out and lock the cam. Now, now I have the crank locked. You only actually need to lock one of the two cams. Some people do both sides, but uh, once you've locked one, they're both locked. So um, I'm going to pluck that out now. So it's a bit hard to film me pulling the plug out, but you can see there that the plug's been removed. And you can see sort of the top, there's a bit of a slot in the end of the cam in there. You wanna make sure that that is uh, facing up and down nicely, and I should be able to get my locking tool in it now and lock it into place. So there you can see it installed, and you can actually use one of the uh, pressure plate bolts to actually hold it in place. Okay, so the next job is you need to release the chain tensioners and undo the chain tensioners. And the first one is down the back here and there's a socket down in this tube here. I managed to sort of get it down through this angle. It's a, a very difficult place to get to, but uh, I did manage to get that one undone. So now we're gonna move around. So if you come back under the car, it's much easier to find the ones underneath the car. If we're looking at the, uh, the flywheel there, there is one right here. And there is also, Another one is right there. Yeah, so let's remove those and, uh, and make sure you take note of where they go. So now it's time to start removing the cover. We start by removing the, uh, the, the bolt through here. So I need to have a spanner and a flat blade screwdriver and let's uh, undo this center nut. 
And now I need to go through and remove the mounting nuts for the flange. The cover is off. Um, the, um, I've done about another 10,000 Ks since I did the uh, other thing. I've actually driven this car quite a bit since then. And uh, the bearing still feels completely fine. I can't feel any movement. I can't hear any rattling or anything. It feels nice and tight. So now it's time to actually remove the bearing. And uh, on the Series 2 engine, so the 3.6s, uh, they have a single row IMS bearing and um, in fact, they're actually the ones that are most likely to fail. For some reason, uh, this er the early engines had a dual row IMS bearing, so it's got it's it's got a lot more meat on it. It's a much bigger bearing, and uh, apparently, they only experienced about a one percent failure in these bearings. Whereas the uh, the single row IMS bearing from the um, the 996.2 cars that experienced about an 8% failure rate, which is obviously a much higher, much scarier thing. So now I've got the Alien Engineering Cool Toolkit. So the right way to get it out, not trying to fumble with all the other stuff that I tried to get out last time using all different types of pullers, just get the kit. Trust me, after the headaches I went through, if you didn't watch that video, go back and watch my uh, my IMS bearing uh, removal fail video because I tried all sorts of things and it was a nightmare trying to get that thing out. So um, get the kit, it is, it's just bed, borrow, steel. You can actually uh, go to Airline Engineering site and, uh, um, and basically rent the kit, so you pay for it, uh, and if you send it back within the uh, required time, they will uh, they'll refund you uh, most of your money on it. So you can rent it, you can get this kit, it is worth getting it. Oh, don't go through the headaches I went through last time. So let's start using the kit now and pulling that bearing out. Ah, yes, here it comes. That, I think, did it. Hey, ah, oh, that was so easy. <laughs> After the absolute nightmare I had last time, I have been petrified of doing this again because it was, if you guys saw, I spent a day and a half trying to pull this bearing out. The issue is with this bearing on the dual row bearings, it doesn't have a circlip. It's got this little ring around the edge of the bearing there, if you can see that. And this ring is actually, uh, it's just a spring lock ring that springs into the, uh, the center of the intermediate shaft. And that's what you have to sort of overcome to pop it out. And it just, it just would not come. But now, I wonder what the, the, <laughs> the drama was. Just using the right tools helps. So uh, yeah, definitely get the tools. Uh, I tried everything I could. So many different types of bearing pullers. They just would not get it out. And, uh, and the proper kit gets it out. So uh, one bearing out. Let's start working out how to uh, clean this up and then get the new bearing in. All right, so I have the bearing and the driver that comes with the bearing in the freezer at the moment, just getting nice and cold so that it will uh, hopefully shrink enough to just slide into the uh, housing nice and easy. That's the, uh, that's the plan. So use a, uh, a dead blow hammer and uh, it's vitally important to keep it dead straight and get the bearing in nice and straight. Nice and cold, it went straight in, that's good. Exactly how I want it. So now, this bearing does have a circlip for it, so I'm gonna put the circlip in and uh, then hopefully she's uh, nice and secure. So after a bit of Googling on how to actually properly install the spiral lock ring, it's actually designed to be installed by hand, no special tools. Pull it apart and have your fingers in between the, uh, the coil and then just sort of push it in and work your way around the coil and that's how I got it in. It's nice and secure now, it's all locked in. And we have the ceramic IMS bearing in the car, so it is time to start uh, putting in the uh, supplied cover. 
You need to make sure you're using new micro-encapsulated bolts that go into these holes. That's actually what uh, seals it in. A bit of lube on the rubbers just to make sure it's a nice, air. it's gonna get a nice good seal around there and we should be good. So now for the centre nut on the uh, on the bearing itself, uh, I'm just going to put a bit of Curel T onto it and uh, seal it in. All right, well that means that the bearing is now installed. It's all talked up. It's all good. So it means going back around and reinstalling everything. So okay, so now it's time to reinstall the chain tensioners, and you want to make sure you reinstall them in the exact same locations you took them out. If by chance you do get them mixed up, there is a little trick to tell you how it is. If you have a look here on the case, there is like, um, if the camera will focus, you can sort of see there's two rings on the case here next to the uh, uh, chain tensioner hole. And on the chain tensioner that goes in there, you can see that there's sort of two dirty rings there. Those two rings are only in this tensioner. So each tensioner has a different number of rings in it. So you can make sure you get them back in the right spot. So now I'm going to head up here, remove the cam lock. And install a new cover over the top. Let that just press in. There we go. And now I can remove the locking ring. And it's time to turn the engine over at a full revolution just to ensure that the, uh, the timing hasn't jumped out and there's no valves touching pistons. All right now, so reverse order, we're putting it all back together again. So we put on the uh, flywheel and the clutch. The clutch is, uh, I, I replaced it last time, it's got 10,000 Ks on it, it's got barely any wear on it. It's, uh, it's looking good, so replace the flywheel, replace the clutch. I have got brand new flywheel bolts because you, they are a stretch bolt, so I'll show you as I install them, but these are a one-use item, so you can't reuse them because they are a stretch bolt. Okay, so I've installed my new flywheel bolts, brand new flywheel bolts, and they're all torqued up to 19 foot-pounds. But now I need to actually turn them another 120 degrees. So I've put a mark on the top of all of these bolts and a mark corresponding on the flywheel at 120 degrees. So I know now I just have to go on each one of these bolts and turn them around until they are in line with that marker. And I know that they are torqued to spec. Now it's time to actually uh, fill up the oil and uh, I am going to be using uh, Penrite HPR5. So uh, let's chuck this in now and um, fingers crossed, it actually starts again. All right, I left myself a little note under the bonnet to change the oil, which I have done now. All right, I just went through the fuse panel down here and I've pulled out the fuel pump fuse. That's so that I can actually turn the car over and, uh, and sort of turn it over a few times without the fear of it actually starting, just to make sure uh, everything is moving the way it should and then replace the fuse and start the car. Let's see how it goes. So I'll replace this uh, fuse. All right, I just rechecked the oil level while I was out there just to uh, double check everything seems good. So. Uh, Let's go. Last thing to do is to uh, take it for a quick test drive, but um, I'm pretty happy, I'm pretty happy.
And that is it, the IMS bearing is replaced. The last thing I have to do is just put the uh, sticker inside the boot lid. Um, there's a couple of places you can put it apparently, uh, near the uh, door jam where the VIN number is and that sort of stuff. I'm gonna stick it inside the boot lid so it can be seen when you're popping the engine and you can see that it, the IMS bearing has been replaced. And the last thing I ask you to do is uh, actually to send the old bearing back to Ellen Engineering. Just, uh, I think it's probably more proof that you've actually pulled, pulled the old one out. Either way, it is done. It is definitely worth uh, getting the proper pulling gear. As I said, you can rent it from Ellen Engineering, borrow it from someone, just get the right thing. You don't want to go through the headaches that I went through last time when I just couldn't get that bearing out. Um, it may be easier on some cars or not, but it just it just would not come out uh, with the uh, conventional pullers I had, and I tore my hair out for ages. It is a stressful enough job as it is, at least for me, to do it, and uh, now it's done, and it's working. So, um, as always, please like, subscribe, do all that sort of stuff. Um, join us on Patreon to watch these videos ad-free a day early, and if you need any parts for your Porsches, make sure you check prices first at Porsche Parts by Jeff. All right, guys, I'll uh, see you next time. Bye.